Morning, girls. You're all right. Yeah. It's early, isn't it? Yeah. Are you off to school today? No. No, lockdown's over nearly, Dad. <laughs> We're going on, on holiday. holiday. Wee! Let's go and have a family fishing holiday. Everyone warned me that the years would just fly by, and wow, they weren't wrong. Fern's four and Maya's five now. I can already see these awesome family fishing holidays slowly coming to an end as they begin to develop their own interests. Of course, I'd love for them to continue to nurture a passion for angling, but I certainly don't want to force it. However, right here, right now, that buzz is still there. So off we set on another family fishing adventure. You've got to live here for four days. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that door. Look at this. This is our own garden. With our own lake. I never saw that there. Wow, what a year 2020's been, and not really for the right reasons. I don't think anyone saw that coming the global pandemic with coronavirus. Which means when we should have gone away back in March for our annual family fishing holiday, we've had to wait until everything's safe. Uh, and now we're here, it is July, and we've come away for just a short break together. Chloe, the girls, myself, and we've even brought the dogs with us. We've come to one of the most beautiful parts of the British countryside, the Cotswolds, and specifically in the Cotswold Water Park itself. And we're staying, not in a bivvy, in a very, very lovely Cotswold Stone Cottage at Welford Pools Fishery. It's a fantastic complex of lakes that offer everything for the day ticket angler, as well as some pretty top-notch accommodation. We arrived on the Monday and met up with Steve, the owner, and Ollie, his right-hand man, where they took Chloe, the girls, and myself for a big tour around everywhere, showed us the two cottages, showed us the apartments, took us to the tackle shop, before walking us around the day ticket lakes, and finally showing us this lake just over my shoulder here, which is part of the, the accommodation where we're staying. The house itself is incredible, far more than, than we really require. It actually sleeps 12 people with numerous bathrooms. Um, yeah, a games room with a pool table, a huge kitchen, a big dining room table, which is all fantastic. And if you just wanted to come away and stay somewhere nice, this really is top draw. But what interests me specifically is the lake. Um, there's some seriously beautiful carp in here. The Cotswolds is famous for it, those scaly fish. And yeah, upon arrival, I was really itching to get the rods out and do a little bit of fishing. But before we could do that, there was the great big van sort out. We'd packed it to the rafters, all the girls' stuff, Chloe and I's clothes, plus loads of fishing tackle. So a few hours later, after sorting all that, eventually I got out in the garden to actually do a bit of fishing. First job was erecting a gazebo because although it is July and it should be 25 degrees plus, we've not had fantastic weather this week, lots of drizzly rain and stuff, so I knew the gazebo was going to be essential to ensure that we could all spend some good quality time out in the garden without getting soaked to the bone. Once that was set up, I really wanted to understand what was out in front of me in terms of the water I had available to me. Uh, the bank and the sort of left-hand margin that I'm fishing is only really accessible if you stay in this property, which excited me. That first afternoon, the weather was good, you know, the sun was shining and stuff, and the fish were certainly working their way along the margin. Um, I baited some spots after I'd found that they were really clean gravel areas with some scopic squid flake and a little bit of sweet corn and pellet and stuff. And yeah, around six o'clock, decided to drop the first rod into position using the baiting pole. Oh, just nice and gently now. A little bit of lifting. Oh. Oh, look, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Give it a cut. Nah, I'm going to like this. I'm going to get broke. I'm going to run past me, jump out of it. <laughs> I can't and the glass. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is really Come on. No, not... Quickly. Bye, no, no. Bye. Real, real. When it's up, it's come. Let him come. Maybe steer him to the left a little bit. Go a bit closer. Nice and gently now. 
bit of lifting. Just a little, just a little bit. Yes! <laughs> really good. Well done. Wow, what an evening. <laughs> Half an hour before dinner we started fishing and <laughs> we've had four and I didn't even get to eat all my dinner, did I? No. Have you had your pudding yet? No! Oh, nightmare. We should get these back, go to the park and get some sleep because it's been a long day, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shall I get a nice picture? Yeah. Should we get a nice picture? Yeah. Right. Put the girls to bed and then Chloe and I fished on into that evening catching some more absolutely gorgeous fish. Already had it. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No, you haven't. Yeah, we have. Who? I'll show you the pictures. Who's one? <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> I don't know. It looks the same. They're all scaly, aren't they? All just nice ones. What a fantastic first evening. This place is incredible. Yeah. Seven or eight bites now. All had a few each. I'm going to have to reel rods in. There's no way I can stay up all night catching these. You want to stay up and fish, babe? No, not tonight. It's been a long day and uh, I'm sure there's plenty more bites to be had over the next couple of days. Early start, four o'clock I reckon, out here watching for bubblers, see if we can get some more bangers. That previous day on the Monday, I mentioned I'd also had identified some really nice silt areas in much deeper water, around 12 foot. Um, and I baited those with just citrus boilies, literally a light scattering of citrus boilies. And when I woke up on that Tuesday morning, that was my line of attack really, much further down towards the house, uh, fishing about 16 wraps away. I chucked out some longer fang gyro rigs with 12 mil citrus pop-ups on. And it was kind of a repeat performance of the night before. Immediately we were catching carp. You meant you wanted to jump in with it. No. Would you rather a four pound chub or a four pound barbel? A barbel. I didn't even know what you meant. Oh, 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 go on, oh, oh, quick, oh, quick. quick. Go, 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 go. Quick, Fern, quick. You're a pro. <laughs> On three. Say family fishing holiday. Family fishing holiday. Bye bye. <gasps> there he is. Yeah. <laughs> 
By about mid-morning, we decided to knock it on the head, came in, had some lunch uh, before going out for a really big walk, taking the dogs with us. Um, girls went butterfly catching and collecting some wildflowers. We found a giant lake, like a big nature reserve, which the boys absolutely loved, did lots of swimming. The girls did some paddling before heading back later on that afternoon and doing a little bit more fishing. Um, again, just as productive, but instead of fishing down in the silt um, towards the uh, house, I went back onto the margin down to my left-hand side, um, fishing those nice clean gravel spots, uh, and again, caught some more fish be before it was time to go to bed. Um, it was actually our anniversary that day, 15 years Chloe and I have been together, so knocked the fishing on the head about seven o'clock, had a fantastic meal, nice bottle of bubbly, jumped in the hot tub, and yeah, sat chatting up into the, to the early hours. It was really, really nice which takes us up really to today. It's now Wednesday. Um, haven't fished at all today, other than I got up this morning about half four and did a couple of hours perch fishing, which was also just out of hand. As much as the carp fishing is fantastic and all four of us have caught loads of lovely carp. Got some really, really nice perch this morning fishing the float. And haven't fished for the rest of the day. Um, been out for another real big walk. Um, make sure the dogs are well exercised. And to be honest, I'm really itching to get out there now and do a bit of fishing. And I know the girls are too. They're just currently next door playing in the games room. But I'm looking forward to getting out there, even though it's a bit drizzly and a bit wet. I'm gonna fish this left-hand margin just for the next sort of two or three hours, because I do believe the fish will push back up here again and see if we can get some bites. Should we go do a bit of fishing, Bailey? These dogs will quite happily sit here and chill all day. Me on the other hand, I'm getting out there to get the rods out. Come in. Come on then. Next job, let's get these rods ready. Um, using two pound sawn offs, a couple of different reasons. One, the fish aren't massive, a um, lot of doubles, the odd 20. There's a few better ones in here, a few decent 20s, but on the whole, they're, they're relatively small in terms of carp. And also because the girls are using them, you know, and they want to enjoy the fight and stuff. I'm not casting, so I don't need a three pound or, he or heavier. Um, that's why I'm using the, the two pound saw on this occasion. The setups, they're identical on every single rod. I've got a length of 40 pound Klingon leader there, and then my inline lead setup. I'm not fishing it drop off. I've actually threaded it down the leader itself. And that's because up until yesterday evening, we'd already caught 18 carp. The last thing I need to be doing is dropping a lead every single take. Um, so it's just fished in line. I've actually removed a segment of the plastic insert, which allows me to fish one of these rubber inline lead inserts, just so I'm fishing it totally safe. Um, what will happen there, if I do crack off, if I do get cut off on my main line, it'll allow that lead to discharge from that soft insert and pass all the way up the leader, leaving just the fish trail in the rig. Hopefully that won't happen, it hasn't happened so far. When using it, I just wet it, pull it down in there, connect it onto the end of the Klingon leader. I've got a uni ring swivel there, gives me lots of movement. And then I've got a short section of 20 pound arm link, fish slip D style with a size six, twister hook, there's a slip D arrangement, a little tungsten kicker on there. And instead of using a bait screw, which I normally would, I've actually mounted a micro hook ring swivel on there and then a very short section of 15 pound armour link. And that's because I'm fishing with just a single 12 mil boilie or potentially one or two fake bits of plastic. Um, I just don't need a big cumbersome bait screw there for this particular setup anyway. That's the finished rig. Um, it's what we've had most of the fish on so far with the exception of the fish that have been caught in the deeper silt. Um, I'm gonna get these rigged up now, mount the hook baits. Then I'm definitely gonna go and stick a pair of waterproofs on because it's absolutely chucking it down again. But I'm very much looking forward to getting these rods out and trying to catch a few fish. Just like when wrapping up with the rapid sticks, the deliverance baiting pole sections can be used in a similar way by noting the number of sections required to get to a desired spot. The huge garden at Welford allowed us to have lots of sections joined together at once, making shipping out to the spot so easy. So easy, in fact, that the girls could run the length of the garden, shipping out the spoon as they went. Oh, girls! Hey. Hey. 
This one, this one. I was just standing there thinking, hang on a minute, we managed to get two rods out. The use of Easy Guide back lens in situations such as this when fishing multiple rods in a tight area really is essential. Yes, of course they're useful in terms of mainline concealment, but they really come into their own when playing fish tight to the bank, preventing the other rods from being wiped out in the process. I'll always try and understand the marginal shelf of the use of a spot on marker float, and where it levels itself out, I'll slide the back lead down my main line, getting it to drop as close to the bottom of the shelf as possible to maximise their effectiveness. That's it, guide him up now, guide him up now. Bend the rod up. Well done. <laughs> like that. As I say, not fished at all today. In fact, haven't fished since seven o'clock yesterday evening. So it's kind of approaching 24 hours, which is a good thing. You know, venues like this, if you can keep lines out of the water for a period of time, it hopefully allows those fish to come back in and feel safe. Don't get me wrong, I have been giving them a little bit of free food, not a lot, just enough to hopefully keep them in the area, grabbing around and stuff. So the mix I've been using ever since I got here on these cleaner gravel spots is primarily flake Scopex squid, which is literally just a Scopex squid boilie, but it's been run through a, a slicing machine to give you lots of fine slices and dust, various different particle sizes. So a whole kilo of that, and that will see me right through till, till tomorrow morning. Um, into that, I am going to add some pellet. Um, the fish stocks have come from various sources, but a number have come from fish farms, so they're very used to seeing feed pellet like this. This is the two mil Scopex squid, and I'm also gonna add some of the six mil Scopex squid. I'm yet to find carp anywhere in Europe that don't love getting the red down over a bit of pellet. So just a few of them. And then finally, just some whole 12 mil boilies, and that's purely because that's what I'm using on the hook. Um, I have been tipping them off with a little bit of plastic corn, but to be fair, I haven't noticed a difference in capture rates between, you know, straight up match the hatch or, or tipping them with a bit of yellow. We'll give both a go this afternoon. So a few of them in there. Give it a good mix up. It's a proper grabbing around mix. Um, I could have just used straight boilies. My thought process though is though, if I just use that quantity of boilies, they could eat it very, very quickly, as opposed to a handful of that stuff there, which could keep them there grabbing around for potentially hours. The only additional thing I'll do is I will add some of the liquid bait soak. I don't know if you can see, but you've got a food-based uh, section here. This is all the food base, and this is all the oil-based content. Gonna give it a real big shake, mix them all together, and then add a decent amount of that. The liquids really do keep the fish in the area for prolonged periods of time. Even once those 12 mil boilies and the pellet and stuff and the bigger bits of flake have been eaten, it's the liquid that will seep into to the gravel and stuff on the bottom. If you look at this gravel here now, you can imagine little bits of that dust getting trapped in there and especially that heavy liquid seeping down into the bottom. And that's what keeps those fish there grubbing around for ages and ages. Give that a real good mix up. And there you go. There's the finished mix, ready to feed. Do you do reeling? I'm gonna help ya. He's a, he is a strong one, isn't he? That's it, now do guiding. Look at how scaly he is, keep the rod up. Steer it this way a little bit. Yes! He's nearly a fully squeaky sweetheart. We just got a fully squeaky. We did, I think. We might Look have. at him. It might have been Myers, actually. Wow, he's a lovely one. It's okay, I'll put the medicine on my fingers and then put it all over the scale. Like that. And then I can literally take a little bit of water Put the water on it and look what it does. It makes a plaster. That's spicy. It's lamb, sweetheart.
Second one of the meal, that's both those rods gone off that decent spot now. Well, we nearly finished tea, didn't we? <laughs> Would you like to do it, sweetheart? Good girl. I did finish Stand my Stand back tea. a little bit. Oh, well, I haven't quite finished mine. <laughs> right, you've got to do plenty of reeling. Good girl. That's it. That's it. That's it, look, then look at the fish. Watch what you're doing. Keep reeling. A little bit more. A big one. It is a big one, sweetheart. Good job you ate all your tea. I did, really. No, I didn't. Mine's still half in there. A little bit more, a little bit more. That's enough, that's enough. Just guide him now. That's it, guide him. Oh, nearly. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah. I tried to reel with me. You did a perfect job. Right, let's set the rod down and finish our tea. I'll race you back to the house. What an amazing third day. Haven't done any fishing basically for 24 hours. Put the rods out about half six and has it kicked. <laughs> we just about managed tea, didn't we girls? Yeah. I think it's time to get dried up, have a marshmallow and get to bed, yeah? And, but, and can we burn? You can, you can toast your own marshmallows. <laughs> it's been brilliant, hasn't it? Come on, let's get them back. Bye-bye. <laughs> What a place, what a lovely end to what's been a dreary, wet, miserable day, but we're all gonna go to sleep with big smiles on our faces. That was stunning. Have you got three? I did get one from the boys. <laughs> I'm doing one for the boys. Or maybe you're just a borrower. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not tiny. Mm -hmm. Everything else is giant. Well, yesterday evening was a total madness. Um, eight fish in very quick succession in the midst of trying to have a barbecue. And yeah, the girls went to bed shattered, no doubt. Chloe went to bed about half 10. I made the decision to stay out here. Got the scope sleep system out and I done the night. Repositioned the rods on this sort of left-hand margin around midnight, half past uh, 12, something like that. And um, yeah, I wasn't sure they were gonna go because I'm certain the fish are moving up that margin in the afternoon and into the evening and then pushing back down into the deeper water where the silt is um, throughout the night and certainly now this morning. But over the course of the, the night time, they did rattle off. And in amongst that, I did catch two really, really nice ones, which was what I was kind of after. I've dropped them in the sack and uh, the girls are gonna be up soon, no doubt, and get a nice picture together. Um, yeah, really looking forward to this morning. I'm going to get the, the longer scopes out, fish down onto the bottom of this bank here. 16 wraps, um, little fang gyro rigs over the, the silt and stuff. And I'm pretty confident if I keep trickling some freebies in over the top, there's every possibility of a few more bites to be had. But for now, sleep system packed away, waterproofs on. Let's do a bit more fishing. What you got? Well, it wants to come out, I reckon. Yeah. So I'm going to tip some into the bucket. And then we can light them this morning. No, it's probably a bit early for citrus sweet art. And then what I'm going to add is this special liquid. And what the liquid's going to do, it's going to make them all really, really sticky. And then once they're sticky, I'm going to add some special, special citrus dust. It's a little bit like fairy dust, but for fish. <laughs> I'm going to dust that off. And now, if you have a look now, we have to leave them for about 10 minutes. That'll all dry on there. And it makes them even more attractive and even more special.
You're all right. Keep lifting while you do this tail fern, eh? just the top bit. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> a really, really nice one. I've had this one about half past three, quarter to four. Yeah, little 12 mil Scopex squid over a handful of flake. Used the deliverance baiting pole to ship it out. It's been a really, really good tactic since we've been here. Is it bigger than mummies though? That's the question. I don't even know. Well, mummies was 21 pounds. What do you reckon, bigger or smaller? Smaller, mummy says smaller. Bigger. <laughs> what number does it stop on, Fern? 23 pounds. 23 yeah. Wow, it's a good one, isn't it? Let's let him go. There he goes. Bye bye, one. Wow. You oh, can see him go off. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Come on then. Let's have some breakfast. He was so bright that I could see him. Look at that. Another truly incredible Welford Pools carp. The stock's blowing me away. The amount of action's blowing me away. And yeah, to catch a few better ones, what a place. Mega, mega little trip. You want to best that free? Yeah. Okay. Do you think a big fish might like that? Yes. Okay. Stop. Gently, gently. Hey. <laughs> just started kicking off. A little bit late to be fair, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, boys have just shot off to get some cutting shots of the other side of the house and stuff and the sort of surrounding lakes. Um, while they were gone, caught a really nice one. Lovely mirror. And we're just about to get that out and kind of wrap up here for the morning. And this one's bust off. So it's three bites now, fishing the long spot with the 12 mil citrus pop-ups. Definitely seems to be producing a better stamp of fish. This is a good one. Just keeping the tip nice and low. They're just trying to work their way along that margin. There's plenty of overhangs and snags and stuff in the water. I really don't want it to get into contact with any of those. Yeah, tip nice and low. Sometimes turns their body over and aids with getting them in. And when you've got them out into open water, you can bring that rod back up. Depends what you're after, but if someone said to me, for the amount of time we've been fishing here, you could have caught a couple of 30 pounders or you could have had 25 of these. Oh, I'd have took this all day long. So much fun. Mega, mega fish. Brilliant. That's the first of the two quick bites. Yeah, a real chunky one. Still beautiful, but wait till you see this other one and have a proper Cotswold scaly. I think that's well and truly a wrap over here at Welford Pools. This is something like 28 carp now. The fishing's completely blowing my mind. I never thought it'd be anywhere near as productive as this. God knows what it'd be like if you fished properly hard the whole time. And as for the stock, out, out of hand. Truly, truly incredible. We were due to be staying one more night in the incredible house, um, but I'm going to sacrifice that for an offer that's just too good to be true. Steve and Ollie have very kindly said we can jump onto Bramblemere for the night. The customers aren't turning up until about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And yeah, as much as all the mod cons are fantastic, we've had three nights in there. Going to go over the road, set up a base camp and try and catch a slightly bigger, truly stunning Bramble Welford Cotswold banger.
Well, this is a world apart from that luxurious Cotswold Stone house just across the road there at Welford Pools. Slightly embarrassed to say, this is my fourth trip with a power barrow. Uh, yeah, we're here, we're at Bramblemere, and it is incredible, take your breath away stuff. Uh, before the momentous task of getting all the gear around here to Chloe, the girl, and I could do the night round here, I did do a lap. It's a very aqua blue colour. It's got some dye in the water to try and knock back the weed. And that does make visibility quite bad. Um, the sun's also not out. So I haven't seen anything in the edge. Um, there's a few fish lumping out along this bank, about 30 to 60 yards, something like that. Um, so unless I'm gonna go round and round and round and round and try and find an opportunity at the edge, I think I'm gonna have to fish out in the lake a little bit, which is no big deal. Um, I'll just adopt the tactic I'd used previously over at Welford Pools, which was with the baiting pole, uh, inline ledge, short hook link, um, and shipping out and dropping it, and just swap that round a little bit for solid bags. I'll just pack everything tightly inside the bag and try and just make single casts. I'll stand there, wait for my opportunity, see a show, and just discreetly drop a solid on their heads. That's the plan, but for now, I'm gonna get the base camp set up for the girls, get there nice and cozy. Very much looking forward to an Indian takeaway tonight. And fingers crossed, an absolute bramble banger to finish things off. Just in the nick of time, that base camp went up. Um, it, heavens have opened. Kind of expected it. Got lulled into a bit of a false sense of security early. The sun come out and it's really, really nice. Actually, I had shorts on for half an hour, but yeah, we're back to torrential downpours in July. However, I'm not letting it dampen spirits. There are a lot of fish showing out here. And whereas I had planned to sit in tie solid bags, it's never a pleasant experience in the rain like this, everything getting wet. So for now, I'm just gonna chuck out some pop-ups, same rigs, exactly the same setup as I was using over at Welford Pool. So the helicopter setup, um, section of skin link, little Ronnie rig with a claw. Um, yeah, just to try and nick an early buy. I still plan to chuck out the bags, but I'm gonna wait for this weather to pass, if it passes at all. For now though, I'm gonna drop these on the top of the sham fish. I don't really want them pointy. I want them to be a bit more rounder so they cast further. So what I do is I push the bag in like that. Well, we nearly got the bag tied, Fernie, didn't we? We were just tucking the corners in and the other rod's gone. It's very weedy out there. I can just feel it stuck in the weed at the moment. So all I'm doing is keeping constant pressure just to see if I can get him to come out. <laughs> it's a tench. Oh, well, it's a big tench. Head to go. It's not a bad one. Fingers crossed. 
Thank you, fingers crossed. Bit of you, ain't it? Yeah, <laughs> That's a bit of you, son. Managed to pull it out of the bag on a solid bag. Little 12 mil hard ons, bit of flakes, and two mil pellet. Yeah, bit of a result, really. Torrential downpour last night. It wasn't that textbook beautiful evening we'd hoped for, but managed to get the base camp set up in time. Girls crashed out. Chloe and I had a curry, and yeah. This little fella tipped up in the early hours of the morning, so super made up with that. Have got a bigger one, just waiting for Maya to wake up now, and we'll get that out before the big pack up and we head back down to Essex. But it has been a truly incredible three or four days out in the Cotswolds. Welford Pools took my breath away, and yeah, Bramble, incredible as well. I'll definitely be back. Really nice one, isn't it? Why is it almost black? Yeah. What an amazing end to our four days in the Cotswolds. Can't thank Steve and Ollie enough for letting us stay at Welford Pools, Lakeview Holidays. The accommodation was totally out of hand. Mega, weren't it? What did you think of the house we stayed in, girls? Yeah! It was mega, like really special. Um, yeah, to walk out into that back garden and catch the incredible fish we caught. And then, yeah, to shoot over the road to Bramble and do a quick night last night. It really has capped off a, a fantastic short break. Should we give him a kiss goodbye? We'll be going again soon, girls. Let's give him a kiss, Maya. Oh. <laughs> Say bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye, fish. Bye-bye, fish. Bye-bye, Yeah, we'll let him just swim off. As another family fishing holiday comes to a close, I really do have to take a step back and think just how lucky we are, not just as a family, but as anglers full stop. To think just a matter of weeks ago, the country was in total lockdown and we were only allowed an hour's exercise outside a day. To now being able to get out there and do what we love again, to go fishing. For me, angling truly is special and to be able to do it with my family makes it even more so whether it's to admire the beautiful sunrises, the peace and quiet, or just for the freedom and adventure aspect that it can bring, it truly is a remarkable thing that anyone from any walk of life can partake in. If the global pandemic taught me one thing, is to appreciate what I have now more than ever, in this instance, my family and my fishing. I can only wish and dream there are a few more adventures with Chloe and the girls in years to come, or they really do get too old and tell mummy and daddy it's just not for them anymore.